Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. Throughout my tutorials I will teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. This tutorial is an introduction to inheritance. I'm going to, I'm going to open up my website here to javacjava.com Click on the pop-out menu and select Java OOP Tutorials. i will bring you to my object-oriented programming tutorials page. I also have a main tutorials page with many, many more tutorials. Let's select the Introduction to Inheritance tutorial. Inheritance is one of the key components to understanding object-oriented programming. The word inheritance implies receiving certain possessions upon the death of a family member or a close friend. In real life, one can drop a will specifying who will receive a possession and who will not. One can even, even designate that possessions can be shared or even say that no one can have them. Many lawyers make a decent living writing up wills and acting as an executor. In Java, the concept of inheritance is similar. The relatives are the classes, the possessions are its members, the family is a package. A will specifies the ownership and access to possessions, whereas in Java, the ownership and access to class members is handled by access modifiers. There is one major difference between real life and Java. No classes have to die for inheritance to occur. The topic of inheritance is quite extensive and will apply to many advanced features of Java. The goal of this tutorial is to lay the first building block in the foundation of understanding inheritance. The, the extends keyword. The extends keyword ties the members of a parent class to a child class. The extends keyword is placed after the name of the child class and before the name of the parent class that we are inheriting from. The parent class is known as the superclass and the child class is known as the subclass. Basically in a class declaration statement here we, uh, we wouldn't have any of this prior to this tutorial. We just have class and class name and then we'd have our class body enclosed in opening and closing curly uh, braces. So, but now we have the extends keyword and then the class name of the class that we want to extend, right? And this will be the super class and the class name over here is the subclass. So let's go ahead and uh, run some code here. Come down here, highlight this. Control C to copy or right click and select copy move our browser off screen. I've got a shortcut to the command prompt down here, but if you don't, you can right click on your desktop, select new shortcut, type in CMD, next finish. It's as easy as that. Okay, let's go ahead and type in Java C and press enter. You should see a whole bunch of stuff scroll by. If you don't, go ahead and watch my tutorial on installing the Java development kit. You wanna make sure you get that installed and configured properly before continuing. CLS to clear the screen, CD space backslash, CD is short for change directory, and a backslash tells it to go to the root. I'm going to make a directory called Java MD. I already have it, but if you don't, it'll create it for you. I'm going to make a directory here called um, inheritance intro. I'll change directory to the inheritance folder, and we'll do notepad inheritance intro Java. Inheritance intro.java is going to be the name of our source code file, <clears throat> also known as a compilation unit. Okay. <clears throat> Go ahead and hit control V to paste in all of the source code there. File, save. Okay, so in the source code file, I've got three classes. I've got my good old box class here and I've taken and modified it a little bit there. I have four instance variables. They're no longer private. The instance variables are uh, basically what's called a default access modifier, which I'll get into in a later tutorial there. And their bit's basically available for direct access. And then I've got this simple little method down here, return volume, that'll calculate length times height times width and return that value as an int data type. Then I've got another class here called Cardboard Box with our new keyword extends and then the name of the box that we want to extend, which is, or the name of the class we want to extend, which is this box class here. So why would we even want to do this? Well, you know, I've had this box class around rather than, you know, say retype all of this stuff into this, right? Do a cut and paste into there, right? Um, 
and then just you know leave this completely out of the equation, right? Then that would work, yes. But it's not good, uh, not good object-oriented programming because why rewrite something if it exists already when we can just inherit it, right? So inheriting by doing extends box does exactly that. It's like, oh, hey, we uh, we um, we took all this stuff right here, right, and just basically pasted it right in. That's essentially the same thing by doing extends box. It'll have all those those values there, all those members, I should have said. So um, so basically, what I'm gonna do up here in the inheritance intro class, which is where we have the main method entry point, I'm gonna create a new reference variable, a new object reference. It's gonna be of cardboard box object type, CB1 reference variable. And that will equal new cardboard box, right? New basically is the operator that creates the cardboard box object, allocates it, and initializes it, right? So CB1 will hold a reference to a new cardboard box object. CB2 will hold a reference to a new, another new cardboard box object. And then I'm going to set the um, inheritance, or I'm sorry, the initial, uh, the instance variables that we inherited directly, right? So cb1.length, and you can see cb1 does not have a length instance variable, but because we extended the box class, we inherited all of its members. So this int length right here might as well be down in here, but we can access it directly by using the, the dot operator and then accessing the member directly and setting its value equal to five. Same thing, height with unit of measurement, right? The one that you're probably f really familiar with at this point in time is cb1.color, not necessarily the dot color there, but just the fact that the color instance variable is actually declared inside of the cardboard box uh, class. And it is the only member that I've declared inside of here. So the extends box above inheritance inherits all of the members of the box class. So we can set these directly. Okay, and then we'll do the same thing with the, the cb2 object reference here set its length, height, and width, and its unit of measurement is going to be centimeters. The other one, CB1, was inches. CB1's color is going to be a brown cardboard box. CB2 is going to be a white color box, white cardboard box. Then we'll just, um, then I'm just going to use the print line method to display some stuff to the console. So this string literal box one is a, and then we'll directly access the CB1 object reference and its color instance variable to get that value plus this string literal here, cardboard box with a volume of, and then plus the CB1 object reference, and we'll invoke the dot return volume, which will come down here, and return the length times height times width as an int value, and we'll display that, and then plus a little string literal for cubic, and then plus directly accessing the unit of measurement string for that object. I'll do the same thing with the CB2 reference object. So that's a pretty thorough walkthrough on everything here. So let's go ahead and just save this, clear our screen, compile it here. And before we run out, I just want to take a look at some things here. I'm going to do a directory. You see the Java compiler took our source code file here and made three classes, right? A box class, or a byte code for three box classes, I should say. So we have the byte code for box in the box.class, the byte code for cardboard box in the cardboard box.class, and the inheritance intro byte code in the dot class file there. So it's interesting to note that the cardboard box class file, the byte code for it is about uh, almost half the size of the box class there. So when you're when you're doing extends and the Java compiler compiles it, it's not actually taking the code from the box class and stuffing it into the cardboard box class, right? It's uh, it's just merely extending it, inheriting the the members there. Okay, so let's clear our screen and run this here. Let's strip off that. So we're going to use the Java command line tool, which invokes the Java virtual machine or the Java runtime, and we're passing it the name of the class that we want to invoke, which is inheritance intro. Inheritance intro is the only class in this uh, source code file that contains the main method entry point. All right. 
Okay, so we get display to the console. Box number one is a brown cardboard box with a volume of 125 cubic inches. Box number two is a white cardboard box with a volume of 6,560 cubic centimeters. All right, so we got exactly what we're expecting there. So this is just kind of like an introduction to inheritance there and basically this whole tutorial, if you get anything out of it at all, there is the extends keyword and basically that is my goal for this tutorial. I'm going to go ahead and close out of this, close out of that, maybe with a couple of final thoughts here. So there's a lot to take in from this tutorial. Don't worry about understanding everything. I will be reiterating many of these concepts in future tutorials. Remember this tutorial was just an introduction to inheritance. That concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.